Shit, I forgot what I was going to say. The, uh, the Getting High and Talking About Stuff podcast is definitely going to run into a couple of little problems that way. Yeah. Uh, what were we, what was I, maybe that's, that should be the title of it. What was I talking about again? What was I talking if about If nobody again? is taken what was I talking about again, that <laughs> might be what I call. Um, I like it, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, so I'm Hank. I'm the general host and media content creator at the Death by Media Man podcast channel, and I'm sitting down with my friend Alicia. Hi. Oh. How's it going? I was gonna I was gonna tell you to say hi, but you just fucking took that initiative. I mean, you know, I, I guess, don't know if I should feel bad about this. I was gonna tell the producers <laughs> to come in and give you a hand sign, but anyways, uh, here we are. We're sitting down, and we're two regular people having a regular conversation. Alicia, do you want to? Do you want to tell folks anything about yourself? Or... Uh, well, I live in Vancouver. I'm a, a working underpaid artist and uh, hopefully building a future for myself. Yeah. I know you've done a little tiny bit of graphic design for the Death by Media Man channel, which mm-hmm. I greatly appreciate. Oh, uh, yeah, I love it. It's fun. And yeah. yeah, we're just having a casual conversation about topics. 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 People love topics, and right? Things. The topic of today is topics. <laughs> the theme of the awareness fair is awareness. That's from Kelowna. Oh, right. good, cool. good. Yeah, just, yeah. Just, just to explain to everybody that, that was from Kelowna. <laughs> uh, so, um, did you want to? Should I go first? Should I let you go first? Uh, I was thinking, like, I just told you to randomly bring a thing in to tell me about. Uh, you go first. All right. Yeah, it does. That might it creates a little of... bit more of a format yeah, of things. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so, the thing I wanted to talk to you about was uh, Polybus. Polybus. Okay, yeah. I needed to, like, test you and just see if, like, not test you, but just see if you knew what that was okay. just by facial response. And you don't. <laughs> no. um, Polybus is. Uh, it's an urban myth and like like all urban myths it's a lot more fun to discuss if we pretend that it's real okay i don't think that it is i don't know but there are some weird okay so let me let's let's uh polybus is the name of an arcade game that showed up in reportedly like let's let's just put quotes around everything i say from here on out um yeah, the legend of Polybus is that it is an arcade game which would show up unmarked, like an unmarked, uh, like just in a plain black arcade thing, so you'd only know it was the, na- the game by the screen that was on it. Okay. Um, and it was, it only showed up around Portland in like the early 1980s. A handful of people say that they played it and said that it was a really weird experience. It was full of like, I want to say vector graphics, which is like when you get like those weird triangles and lines. Uh, like, like, uh, like balls or whatever. Yeah, yeah, not primitive in the same way as like an Atari game is mm-hmm. primitive, but primitive in a like, yeah, those other weird like tank games you used to see, again, way back in the 1980s. Mm-hmm. Um, but that, that the game would make people sick when they played it, that it would have really negative psychological and physical effects on people when they played it. Interesting. And and then there are reports on top basically, let me let me yeah. fucking the, the, the deal is is that people think Polybus was a CIA project sort of connected with MK Ultra to test the effectiveness of of visual based hallucinations Hmm. or like like how you could sort of cause effects in people and also like levels of addiction with video games like it was the first sort of forays into seeing how people got psychologically linked to that because yeah there are always reports that there would be men in black who would come in to uh take the data off of the machines and nobody's like there's a couple of grainy photographs online which are easily like they're shitty photos from the 80s so it, they're super easy to be faked yeah um nobody there's no concrete evidence and like the the strongest evidence is that it's just a fun myth i think i even at one point there i was listening to a youtube video about it and somebody was saying that like the original article where polybus starts showing up and becoming popularized like it looks like the person who sent that story Somebody sent a story to this video game magazine saying of like, whoa, you guys should talk about this. Like, here's a webpage that talks hmm. about it. And it's like, oh, it looks like that letter was sent by the person who ran the webpage. So it's like a snake devouring its own tail of like, 
oh, you're you're like as seen on this web page yeah. that I run. Yeah, yeah. Um, so the myth started there. That's where it looks like it does. So there there is a like it it's a pretty easy path to follow of a like this is a hoax. Like yeah. there's no concrete physical evidence. That fucking said, yeah. like you you are familiar with MK Ultra mm-hmm. and like yeah that the CIA was doing illegal mind control experimentation with drugs and hypnosis and other weird shit for fucking decades to say nothing of like getting into weird shit like i want to say it's the syphilis that was tested on black men yeah okay yeah and like all and like that's again that's yeah. like living fucking memory like yeah. that's not so and there is a part of me that's like well, they would want it. Like, if they... Like, I understand that when arcades first started showing up, they were one of those things that governments kind of watched. Because, like, I think... It's never what I expect it to be. Like, I think one of the first things they crack down on is because they're so um, tight-fisted about gambling. And Mm -hmm. I think there were gambling associations with arcades when they first started up. And then I've heard since then that, like, a lot of places... Or, like, that the... Your odds of child abduction or other sort of crimes against children taking place on arcade grounds since they were known as being so seedy like that Mm. they've always been sort of under scrutiny in that way yeah and it's also a place where you drop your kids off and don't have to necessarily worry about them right yeah exactly yeah when it's interesting too about the psychological aspect of of testing a game on people is that uh there is a lot of interesting science out there that exists that is that has to do with the way we view images that can make you feel nauseous and make you feel dizzy immediately and then um there's also that whole thing where you put micro images in things that are leading people uh leaving things in people's minds that they don't even realize and that's something that advertising i worry about a lot too right because it's it's slipping into all of different forms of media you could watch a movie and you probably wouldn't notice if it showed up five times in the movie flashed a screen of by forward or whatever right so you think about that as as ways that people insidiously work in advertising into things and we don't even realize i wonder if we were to go back 30 years when we're still figuring all this out uh, how much manipulation could have been done to the population in that way. Well, and how regulated mm. video games were being at that point and how much... But I mean, at the same time, like, from what I know of, they were being, like, because there's a whole bunch of other stuff that didn't... Like, there weren't lots of nudity-based games because there was always somebody in charge sort of cracking down on that stuff but yeah when it gets into the like the weird little meat and potatoes of how a game works and implanting weird subliminal shit in it you can get to a point where coders know shit Mm -hmm. that the other people who are like selling the game are never gonna know you can hide stuff in it so easily as has happened like yeah there's so many like again youtube videos and buzzfeed articles Mm -hmm. they're just lists of shit that programmers have hidden inside of games um, but yeah, the idea of this one, again, being tied into like Manchurian candidate style experimenting with people and again, experimenting to see, I, and it, you know, I mean, it's a very romantic ideal to imagine like an unmarked fucking, mm-hmm. like a black arcade game and nobody knows what it is, but I know one kid who fucking played it for 20 hours and then threw up a whole bunch and then fucking like two dudes in suits came in and they fucking took all the information off it. Yeah. Like... I mean, that's a step away from, is it The Last Starfighter? Do you know the movie where, yeah. like, there's a kid who's really good at an arcade game, and eventually, oh. like, he's so good at the arcade game yeah. that an alien comes down and is like, oh, this was actually, like, a test program. Yeah. We send this arcade to every planet, and, like, if you're really good at it, then we make you a fucking space pilot. Yeah, that's cool. I like that idea. Please, I, I'm very good at video games. Please take me aliens. <laughs> I, I think this kind of feeds into a bunch of that as yeah. well, about yeah. the, like, like, you know how we're just dicking around in the arcade doing absolutely nothing? What if government agents were super interested? Like, like, but, yeah. but I'm really good at, at fucking Tetris. And I feel like the fucking CIA, if they fucking knew how good I was at Tetris, man, they'd fucking... They'd, they'd hire me to build the wall. Or like they'd wire me up and <laughs> test me. Fucking test how my brain works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. maybe. Um, I wasn't going to say there was something about that. Uh, ooh, getting closer. Thank you. Um, I don't remember what it was. It was. That's the theme of this podcast. That's the, see, that's what I mean, right? Yeah. Smoke, got smoke high some weed and, and forgot what I was going to talk forgot. about. Um, the podcast. 
Yeah, but the uh, the idea that they that they experimented on people doesn't seem that far fetched. But I would be super curious to know if there are any like follow up stories other than the original reports of this kid, like you said, throwing up or whatever it is. Like, what happened to that guy? Is well, there anything else? No, and even the ones like the reports about the people who got sick. Mm-hmm. If you track those reports back, they weren't playing polybus, mm-hmm. and and like they're also fucking like one of them. This is like original, well, not original. I guess the original fake news would be going back to when our species first came up with like <laughs> language. But there's a, it's a total fake news thing in that like there, there are these articles and like I've watched some of the stuff I've watched on Polybus. It'll have clips from the news from that point in time. It'll be like this really fucking uh, earnest fucking newscaster and like you know this is in the mid 80s so like again arcades are just coming out people are being really weird and they're like yeah like this child played this video game for 20 hours and then threw up like is this a That's sign propaganda. that video games yeah. are a bad sign and then like they'll even follow it up and say of like he had eaten nothing except corn dogs and coca-cola for 18 hours it's like yeah, I'd fucking throw up if I was sitting in a room doing nothing, yeah. eating shit. Like, like, it's always, and, like, I want to say the other one where there was the kid who passed out. It was a very similar of, like, yeah, he'd been up for 23 hours playing fucking video games and he passed out like, like he any was tired. human being would. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, it's not a, well, it, he could have been playing with a fucking uh, paddle ball. Yeah, and it's That's the same my... thing. Well, yeah, and we're smoking the devil's lettuce right now, and uh, we've been told that we we should, and then it's got the devil in it. But I think they probably said the same thing about video games on every level. Even then, is like a discouragement for pe- for good Christians to to behave better because you it's gonna make you sick. It's gonna it's gonna make you make your mind wrong. I really want to see an old newspaper where they're talking about like the fucking this hoop and stick thing. <laughs> like, no, oh, it's really bad for the kids. Yeah, it's gonna yeah. give them carpal tunnel in the wrist, and it's making them be rude to the elders you better feed them some uh, boring breakfast cereal quick i wish i had a hoop and a stick <laughs> anyways that's the story of polybus, polybus. maybe real but I, I don't i i was going into this super prepared to be like cynical like fucking hey i love this pop culture fucking conspiracy theory i think it's really neat but obviously like all the evidence and everything about it is super fake but then the moment I lean into the microphone, I do just kind of think about all the like stupid ass MK Ultra shit that they did, and it's like, no, they'd fucking totally do something like that. Um, I feel bad because I can't like point to a resource on this, but I want to say that this is one of those like this isn't a conspiracy theory. This is a thing that happened. Maybe you've heard it as well, um, where they tried to put a listening device in a cat. No, <laughs> they tried to put a listening device in a cat, and. Like, they set it outside. The second they set it outside um, to, like, they were just going to kind of let it go and see how it goes, it immediately ran out into traffic and got killed. Ha. And that ended the project. Yeah. But as far as I know, this is one of those things of the, like, no, that's a real thing. This isn't a conspiracy theory. Like, it's a full, like, no, the CIA kind of had to sign off and be of like, yeah, we tried yeah. to do this. It cost some money. It did not work. We look like idiots now. Yeah. So, like, again, they... They try ridiculous, like, people get funding for the dumbest shit. There's got to be a fucking CIA agent out there who got funding to, like, I want to create a crazy video game that's going to fucking get these heavy metal kids in, and, well, like, and we're going to test trend. their reflexes. That's and... the thing. Is it's a trend at the time. It, it's like a fad. Anything that comes up, there's an opportunity there, not just for research, but for control. And they were also just, like, the military has always been on the leading edge of using video game-type technology mm-hmm. for training and shit like that as well. So, again, like, I, it's hard for me to not imagine, man, I would have joined the army if I had known of, like... If I do enough push-ups, can I be the soldier who has to drop acid and play video games <laughs> for three weeks solid to, like, fucking make sure, like, we gotta we gotta see if this kills you or not. Of Like, I'll, I'll take that for my country. Yeah, yeah, I'll I guess. I'll be the one. Be the experiment. I, at the same time, like, I remember reading about some of the MK Ultra stuff, and, like, as much fun as that is to say, it's one of those of, like... It's probably fucking you up for life. Well, have you ever been on acid and had to deal with somebody outside of your sphere of influence like even just like going to the store and buying a bag of chips yeah. like even if you hadn't done a like even if you were a cop or a soldier the idea of being high or coming down from acid and then getting interrogated in a prison cell is like 
oh, I would puke up every single thing that was ever in my soul and just be a super sad person. Yeah, like, that yeah. Would, that you'd would empty yourself out like... literally and, and figuratively. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Now, that doesn't sound like a lot of fun, so maybe not. Yeah, uh, Maybe I just guess. do acid and like and, and talk to friends. Yeah, yeah I yeah. guess. Well, or I'd watch w- friends. Uh, no, don't ever watch friends. <laughs> On acid? It's, no, it's not good. No. <laughs> Um, a lot of this in- interestingly leads to one of the things that I wanted to talk about. All right, let's um, do it. So I was listening to a podcast recently. Um, it's a philosophy podcast and it was about um, basically symbolism and uh, it comes down to essentialism and anti-essentialism. Have you ever heard those terms before? Sort of, but... Yeah, essentialism is uh, basically the belief that the world is the way that it is and uh, that... Uh, there, this is the way it is because we were brought up this way and this is the culture we live in. And so there's, there's not a lot of room outside of that. And a lot of that kind of perspective, though it allows you to like determine what things are, um, it ends up being very reductionist and like brings you down to like simplifications. Like what, if we're talking about the concept of an apple, an apple, and, uh, we describe an apple there's physical descriptions and then there's um ideas about it like what color an apple is because we could see red very very differently and it's many different colors of red um so the essentialist type arguments um i hate i get very turned away from so when they were talking about anti-essentialism is just the idea that nothing in the world is what we think it is and that it's all a manufacturing of our reality um And that's why this kind of made me think of that, too, is just that, like, the possibilities of what they could be doing, what the CIA could be researching, are endless. And we would not really know because we're accepting of the world the way that it is. We have have to conduct ourselves through this world in some way and have something we can agree upon. And so conspiracy theories always kind of live in a weird place for me because it's... It's so possible, but it's so unbelievable at the same time because we have this belief that, no, we're sacred, our bodies are sacred, and we wouldn't be experimented on by our government except all those times they did it before. And we have this belief that the world is the way it is, that they wouldn't do that again because they learned that if you put a microphone in a cat, it just runs into the street and gets hit by a car. You know, uh, lesson isn't learned because people will just accept the reality and move on. So I'm very interested in anti-essentialism. And that's what I was interested in, what you thought about that. Um, that sounds super similar to uh, In the Invisibles. There's a point where they talk about the something that they refer to the invisible is a comic book by graham morrison published by vertigo comics <laughs> um there's something called the white flame technique that they're taught when they're invisible soldiers uh being trained to be these counterculture agents of cool <laughs> um and the white flame technique uh, at some point they one of their teachers bring out this beautiful antique chair and he says like what is this mm. And, and somebody says, it's a chair. And he's like, yeah, but does that word encompass everything that it is? Like, does it tell you how old it is? Does it tell you the art? Like, And then he sort of says, of like, like a carpenter might talk to you about the wood that it was constructed with. Van Gogh might talk to you about the soul of the chair. Um, and then one of the other teachers uh, takes a great big sledgehammer and smashes it. And he says, now where is the chair? Where did yeah. it go? Like, can you point to where the idea of this thing is? Um, and then the next level to that is that we try to do that with ourselves. We say to ourselves these things about, like, I'm a Christian. I am a Muslim. I am a bisexual. All these identities. Am... Mm-hmm. And, and the idea of the white flame was to realize that you have all these things, all these terms and all these ideas to define yourself. And that they are forever incapable of defining you in any way. They're imperfect. And trying to live in that moment where you... I think there is there's that sort of nihilist existentialism to that of like realizing that you are nothing. Like realizing that you are undefinable and like no matter how many terms and words you try to make yourself, 
what you are will always escape that definition. Well, and even then, if you could find a definition, could you really convey its true understanding to any other human being, right? Because of the way that we are, we live independently of our whole existence. Did you ever see uh, the movie Waking Life? Yeah. There's, yeah. I, I don't know if I can do this right, but I always remember the line in it uh, where a woman says, um, when you say the word love, it goes into your ear and travels down this, I can't say the word right, Byzantine conduit um, of all your memories of love and lack of love. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, and just that idea that that specifically those kind of giant terms. I think about that a lot with like, like the word poetry. Mm-hmm. I think if you just say the word poetry, every fucking human being's idea that they jump to is starkly. I mean... I imagine, like, I want to say fucking 85 to 90% of human beings just think of, like, a blurry image of something they were forced to read in school. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, that there's so many, yeah. Well, and it broadens out to even just art in general, and I think that's where the big conversation comes down to is, like, what is art? You can't define that, and every person's going to find it differently, right? Um, So there is, I'm not leaning into the mic, so there is a... definitely things that we can agree on physicality wise but there's so much more that we can't and uh when i was looking this up earlier came across uh, the philosopher i think it was bernstein who basically rejected the idea that anything can be um real because you can't use the levels of uh, physicality to solely describe something. You have to use ideas and concepts in order to convey it. There's, you can't simplify it. So therefore, none of none of those basic lines, all of these rules that we accept, you're here and I'm there, uh, don't actually mean anything without our perception of it, without our idea of it. So nothing really exists. I I sort of like the idea that this leads me into the, like, if you wanted to tell a person what a book is about, you would have to just read it to them. Mm -hmm. And, like, that would be the telling. Like, (laughs) what's it about? Well, every single word in the order that it's in is what it's about. So I can't really tell you without. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But we got to sell this book. So just fucking. It's he's a time traveling bank robber. (laughs) Done. Done. Easy. I'd buy that. Good. Yeah. Okay. I'll think about working on that. (laughs) Oh, well, thanks, Alicia. I think that's that's the conversation that I wanted to have about a couple of unrelated topics that you managed to connect anyway. So fucking like yeah, I guess I guess you get the silver star of this episode. Excellent. Which is good because I was just gonna throw it out otherwise. So I'm I'm glad like yeah. No, it's good it was gonna go bad. So (laughs) all right, well this has been a conversation between two people about two things. What was that thing you were saying? uh, Um was that was that the thing you were saying? Maybe that is. Um, Oh I was think I was talking about the idea of giving it the title. What was I talking about again? um, Let's get, let's get let's get high again. I mean, we probably will. Okay. I don't know. I'll edit some of this out. <laughs> but yeah, that's us talking about stuff. Well, thanks for being here, Alicia. Mm-hmm. And we'll talk about other stuff some other time. Thanks, Amy. All right. Um, I guess people can find you on Twitter. Where are you? Yeah, on? Uh, at Polychromatic Cat on Twitter and Instagram, Star Captain Alicia. I think that's all the places I am right now. Cool. Yeah. I'm I'm still my Hank Patterson. At, if you're listening to this, you know who I am on online. So don't don't worry about it. Just just look at the place where you're looking right now, and I'm there. It's all I'm good fucking stuff. there right now. It's all good stuff. All right. Well, thanks, and let's do this again sometime. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye. This has been a Death by Media Man production. For more Death by Media Man content, check us out on SoundCloud or iTunes, or head on over to patreon.com backslash deathbymediaman for more exciting stuff, or if you want to throw us a couple of bucks to help us keep making great content for you to listen to. Thanks a lot. Have a great day. Bye.